Spooky season is upon us, ladies and gents. So for this week's best camps, I'm going to be showing you 10 incredible Halloween-themed builds. Now, we've had nearly 40 entrants to this week's competition, and I will say I've had to be bloody harsh with it. So harsh, in fact, I'm guessing some of you are going to be thinking, why is that build in that position? Why is it not higher? Why is that only got a mention? Etc, etc. Guys, I've just judged it off what I think is the most... Halloween-y rather than what's the most technical, although that will play a part in it as well. Anyhow, enough waffling on, let's take a look at these camps. In the number 10 spot this week, we have Silver Bunny with the Bloody Hollows build. And yeah, what a wonderfully spooky little camp we've got going on here. Now, right off the bat, I think the lighting is what really makes the exterior of this thing pop. Ah, that really made it stand out for me, especially in this camp location too. What's brilliant against the, you know, the grey backdrop. Now onto the structure itself, and it's not the most technical building I've ever seen. However, it does have that, you know, Halloween-y kind of vibe about it, and, and that's what we're looking for. The decor is what 100% makes this camp. Now, we've obviously gone over the Halloween decorations, but look at this that Bunny's done in the garden here with the hanging mannequins. <laughs> that's a really clever touch, that. Bunny, I think you've done a solid job with this one. The location's great, the lighting's great, and the whole feel of the place, yeah, you've nailed it. It 100% has the Halloween vibe. Thank you very much for entering this week. Congratulations on the number 10 spot. In the number 9 spot, we have Lady H with the High Council build. And yeah, this thing looks like... It just looks culty as hell, doesn't it? <laughs> really. I think the only thing that's missing is a punch bowl in the middle of it and a few litres of bleach. Yeah, <laughs> this thing is dark looking. However, it is Halloween week and that is exactly what we're going for. Perfect job. Now, the building itself is very unique, Lady H. I don't think I've seen anything quite like this, to be honest with you. It does have, you know, your typical kind of compound vibes to it, but it kind of reminds me of, is it Sacrament right up in the top corner at map? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. I'm, I'm definitely getting that kind of feel from this. Now, from a technical standpoint, yeah, this is this is quite a tricky one to do. Obviously, that star in the middle is fucking fantastic. That That is really nice work. It looks like a kick in the dick, to be honest with you. So, yeah, hats off to you for that one. That is bloody impressive. And to be fair, the rest of the structure is quite, you know, it's not the easiest thing to put together. I think you've done a brilliant job on it. It is definitely spooky. Like I say, it's very culty as well. Yeah, top marks from me. Lady H, thank you very much for entering this week. Congratulations on the number nine spot. And I will indeed have a celebratory shot of bleach to, to one of this occasion. In the number eight spot this week, we have Batandra with the Halloween house. And yeah, this thing is spooky as shit. On the exterior, we have this reasonably well done graveyard. Yeah, I, I do like that. It could do with a little bit more decoration, but you've not gone overboard. That's the main thing. Now, the main building itself does have that typical haunted house kind of feel to it. And while it's not an overly complicated structure, I still think it looks pretty damn awesome. Yeah, you, you've done a solid job with this one, Batandra. Now, as for the interior, there's a lot of merge glitches going on. It's extremely well decorated. Why, like, this is properly well put together. Above all else, though, it's creepy as hell. Batandra, you've done a really, really good job at capturing this week's theme fair play to you 10 out of 10 all round thank you very much for entering this week and congratulations on the number eight spot coming in at number seven we have dela with the macabre manor and this is one of those builds which is technically incredible like seriously this thing is so well put together you could take away all the halloween stuff and have you know you could have a pretty damn good looking immersive camp However, it didn't give me the same kind of Halloween-y vibes as some of the builds I were up on the list. I, I just thought I'd clear that up because this is <laughs> this is a fantastic looking creation, but that's my reasoning behind it. So the structure itself, like I said, it is absolutely mind-blowing. The, the level of detail that Dale has put into this, it's next level. I mean, guys, just take a bloody look at it. I don't really have to say much, do I? Everything about it is, well, it, it's spot on. The junk placement, yep, you've smashed that. The materials you've chosen to build the structure itself, absolutely perfect. Couldn't agree with you more. Even the location you've used, yep, I think that's a solid buddy choice. Fair play to you, Dale. Now, I think my favourite part about all the decor, on the exterior at least, is the hanging meat bag. It does add to it, it's very clever, and yeah, it, it's definitely spooky and whatnot. In my opinion, though, the best part about this entire build is what Dale has done on the inside the decor on this what can i say it's phenomenal 
quite simply phenomenal. You can tell he's put a lot of time into it and it looks, yeah, it looks bang on. Dale, thank you very much for entering this week. Like I said, pal, if you take away all the Halloween stuff, you've got yourself a pretty convincing low friendly build as well. Congratulations on the number seven spot. More than well deserved. In the number six spot this week, we have Milne with the House on the Hill build. And again, this one's very much like Day was. Technically, it is absolutely mind-blowing. I mean, that structure, Jesus Christ, the amount of time you must have put into just thinking of the shape of the thing. It's quite simply unsettling. That is a stupid amount of dedication there, my friends. You must be a glutton for punishment. Straight up, we are now, dude, one of the best exteriors on a camp I've seen in a long time. Now, the only reason this is down towards the bottom of the list is, like I say, it just doesn't feel as Halloween-y as some of the builds as you're going to see. Now, I know I keep saying that, but it's kind of the whole point of this week's competition. But seriously, mate, you have killed it. This is a really impressive looking camp. Fair play to you, mate. So, decor-wise, yeah, the interior on this is what really stood out to me. Milne is literally one of the best decorators for immersive style builds in the buddy community. And I think you can see why I'm saying that going off this, can't you? This is properly solid work, Milne. Very impressive indeed. Thank you very much for entering this week. And congratulations on the number six spot. That's off to your mate. In number five, we have Vix with a monster camp, and yeah, I don't really need to say much, do I? Monsters, Halloween, perfect combination. What more could you want? Now, yes, it's true. I don't actually have any idea what kind of monster <laughs> this is supposed to be, but it's Halloween. Anything goes. I think my favourite part about the exterior of the thing is how you've made the teeth. Uh, initially, I thought that was a was a moustache or white lipstick, but that, that's my fault, I do apologise. You know, when I actually watch the video fully, you can quite clearly see that the teeth, and you've done them in a really clever way as well, to be fair. Picket fences to create what all Americans assume to be a British smile. However, little do they know, our teeth are far worse than that. Anyhow, yeah, quite a novel idea and a really clever use of the fences. Now, guys, for all of you watching, this isn't anywhere near as technical as Dela's or as Milne's that have, you know, placed lower than it. However, it's a perfect example of how I've judged this. You know, this is a lot more Halloween-y. Do, do you get what I'm trying to say now? I, I just thought I'd throw that out there. But still, please feel free to eviscerate me in the comments. Now, interior-wise, I think you've captured the spookiness perfectly. I honestly don't think you could have chose better decor for the job. It's a proper dark and foreboding-looking camp, and coupled with the way you filmed it, it 100% gives off that horror vibe. So yeah, fair play to you on that one. Vix, thank you very much for entering this week. Congratulations on the number five spot. Coming in at number four, we have KH Corners with the Witch's Brew Camp. And this thing has it all, ladies and gentlemen. One, it is extremely complicated to do. Trust me when I say it doesn't look like much. However, building inside one of those pre-existing pagodas is no fun task, let me assure you. I mean, yeah, it's an absolute bundle of joy if you've got loads of free time or just absolutely despise yourself. It really is a kick in the penis. You've got to put false floors in. You have clipping issues. God, it's a nightmare. However, when you pull it off and you do an half-decent job on it, like KH has done here, it does give a really unique look, especially the roof section. That roof, if they sold that as a building kit, it'd go like hotcakes. It does look so cool. All the beams and overhangy goodness. Oh, I love it. Jesus Christ, I really, I really need to get a life, don't I? Straight up, we are now, though, KH. The exterior, the way you've used that structure, spot on. No complaints from me whatsoever. So, on to the interior, and this is incredible. Th this is absolutely awesome. I don't know why, but it really stood out to me, this one. It reminded me of Shrek, right? One of the few films that I have actually watched, where Rumpel Foreskin's in the bar trying to recruit people to his cause. Or is that Prince Charming trying to recruit? Y you know what I'm on about, don't you? Oh, a Wendigo tree. So, I think I made a mistake as well, guys. Do you know, like I was saying before, you have to put a false floor in. I think KH has actually just embraced the picnic tables and <laughs> used them as is. Which is fair enough, it makes the build a little less complicated, but it doesn't detract from it at all. Work smarter, not harder, I think applies here, or whatever the bloody saying is, I don't know. KH, thank you very much for entering this week. Congratulations on the number four spot, and thank you for sharing this awesome build with us. Numero tres, we have Aussie Kitty Cat with the Alpine Chapel build, and yeah, the spooky levels are starting to go up now, aren't they? 
before we even look at the rest of the camp, can we just appreciate the creepy ass looking dolls carrying the coffin? Not gonna lie, if I saw that kind of shit as a decoration in front of somebody's house, I'd be avoiding it for, for the rest of the year, let alone Halloween. I'm bloody terrified of porcelain dolls. Moving on swiftly, yeah, the chapel structure itself. Right off the bat, I'm loving the mixture of the defensive walls and, you know, actual normal wall pieces. I've been seeing a lot more of that recently, and I'm not complaining about it. Looks bloody fantastic. Another aspect of the build that really caught my eye is the roofs and how you've used stairs to make the A-frame kind of look. Again, another cool little trick I'm seeing a lot more people use recently, and it just goes to show the creativity of the 76 community. Yeah, all in all, was it? You've nailed the exterior. I love the design of it. I love the overall feel of the place. Yeah, you've done a really solid job with that. Interior-wise, and yeah, there's quite <laughs> there's quite a lot going on in here. Mainly a shit ton of miniature death claws doing something to an altar and. Me, I'm not quite sure what's going on, right? But it, it's different. And above all, it's scary as shit. It's like I've stepped into a cheese nightmare or a particularly strange mushroom trip. But that's fine, because Halloween. So with this interior being so small, there's not actually much we can see in here. But the bits you have done are very spooky. They're very disturbing also. And I must say, I love the unrendered wood grain on the side of the pew there. That that just makes you build. Ozzy, thank you very much for entering this week and congratulations on the number three spot. This was probably the most unnerving build out of the lot of them. You, you did a bloody good job on it. Right then, so now we get to the number two spot and this week it goes to Nina Alabaster with the Dead Man's Halloween Party. And guys, I actually had the pleasure of being in this video. <laughs> Yeah, there I am. <laughs> Lovely. Anyway, this build is actually really quite technical. What Nina's done is taken what's left of a pre-war house, if you could even call it that anymore, and she's turned it into this fabulous creation, which, let's face it, guys, looks halloween as shit, doesn't it? Yeah, of course it does. Now, while this build isn't as complicated as some of the ones we've seen, it's by no means easy. I've said it 12,000 times, and I'll say it at least another 13 times. Building in pre-existing structures, it, it's not a simple task in most situations. Especially in half-demolished pieces of shite like this, you have problems with clipping, you have issues placing items down. It is not a walk in the park, but Nina, she hasn't let that phase her. She's grabbed the building mechanics by the bollocks and bent them to a will and came out with this amazing creation you see in front of you. So obviously, because Nina's used what's left of this house, there's not actually that much of player made structure involved in it the main selling point of this thing is the decor and nina has absolutely killed it even from simple stuff like where she's placed it down which does play a big factor in how a camp works believe it or not to the more complicated stuff like the merge glitches she's implemented yeah she spent a lot of time doing this camp and it really does show nina massive thank you for submitting your camp this week and congratulations on the number two spot more than well deserved you've knocked this one out of the park right then guys for regular viewers of the channel you know what time it is but for those who are new here we're about to do a little something something that i like to call the honorable mention section yes now usually we do have four of these but we do need to start toning it down a bit so we've just got two of them and the first one goes to reasonable madness with this truly terrifying creation now first off i love the location you've chose madness and you know that i absolutely despise the maya but yeah for some reason i think this works really well the building itself is your typical you know high quality style i don't think i've ever seen a rough looking build from yourself and this one is no different it is such a well put together structure now the interior is where you've really excelled with this thing i mean the level of decoration on this my god madness you must have put so much time into this it is sublime quite simply it's easily one of if not the best decorated interiors submitted this week hands down madness the only reason this isn't in the top five is because it is so clean if that makes any sense whatsoever it probably doesn't i know what i'm trying to say but i'm not very good at wording it but yeah thank you very much for entering this week really fantastic build congratulations on the honorable mention now our second and final mention goes to clones with the cursed shed build and again this is another one of those builds that structurally it is fucking awesome like i love the way this looks but it's just not 
It's just not Halloween-y enough. Honestly, dude, if you was to submit this under an immersive build on a normal week, top five. Easily. No questions about it. One thing I did love is the crane with the cage on it. I think that is an amazing touch. That looks really, really sweet, that does. But I think the main thing that did it for me was the interior. The way you've got all the stuff flying around in the air. It, well, it's a cursed storm, isn't it? It kind of makes sense. It, it's a really cool little building trick you've used, and it makes all the difference. Fair play buddy clones thank you very much for entering this week and congratulations on the honorable mention more than well deserved right then so now we come to the number one spot and who do you think's got it this week well i'm not going to keep you waiting for any longer this week's winner is hitbit with the pumpkin build and it doesn't get any more halloweeny <laughs> than that does it i mean it's a giant fecking pumpkin as well as its pumpkiny goodness it's also not the easiest structure to build either granted it's not the hardest thing to put together but it does take a little bit of time and a little bit of effort to achieve this especially in adventure mode we've got a number of blueprints going on and working with those slopey boy pieces as well they can be a pain in the ass let me tell you now they do not like to go in place however it appears like it bits had no problem with it whatsoever and yeah it hit what's phenomenal done it guys another really cool thing i did like about the exterior is the lighting on the eyes there that is a really clever use of the lighting that guys i think it's the um spotlights off the scoreboard but i could be wrong it bit you've absolutely not this bugger for six that is one incredible exterior now if we take a look on the inside of it again it's it's awesome seriously but what can you say bad about that I'm not actually sure what it's supposed to be. Is it supposed to be a, a Halloween enthusiast's convention or a horror-themed cafe? I literally have no clue. All I know is I bloody well love it. The reason this camp's in number one for me, guys, is for a couple of aspects. It's a giant pumpkin. Nothing screams Halloween more than pumpkins. Yeah, it's a little bit cliche, but the way it's been executed, <laughs> it's perfect. I, I can't fault it one bit. And of course, guys, I think we can all appreciate the amount of time which has evidently been put into this. Yeah, top marks all round from me. Hitbit, thank you very much for entering this week and congratulations on the number one spot. More than well deserved. And thank you to everybody who's entered this week. Like I said, I've had to be very, very harsh with the judging this week. I actually had to ask Moonlight Cowboy for a second opinion because <laughs> I was struggling so much with it. Seriously, some of the builds that I didn't even put in were worthy of a top five any other week. So again, thank you all so much for entering and thank you for putting so much effort into making a Halloween camp. Now, just a little bit of information going forward in regards to the normal top five, which will be out next weekend as per usual. Judges are coming back, guys. I'm not going to be doing it week in, week out anymore. I have asked Moonlight Cowboy to do the first week of judging and from then on it's just going to be builders that I know of and builders that I know personally. I don't want any more bloody debacles with ranking. I know I make mistakes but Jesus Christ, <laughs> some of the mistakes I've seen over the course of this series, <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, as ever, I'd like to say a massive thank you to all my Patreons and channel members. The extra support is much appreciated, guys. If that's anything that you lot are interested in, there's a link in the description, as well as links to all my other socials as well. As I say in the north, I will love you and leave you, and I'll catch you at next one. Have fun, everyone.